immigration statistics came out this week. This was super interesting. Um, who are the foreigners in Japan and where are they living? In fact, this is a little bit out of order. Let me... Okay, well, these show the, 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 the main groups of foreigners. Oh, let's zoom that out. And um, the really interesting one is the orange line, Vietnamese. And on the latest, um, as of last year, well, Chinese remain the uh, number one, um, you know, most foreigners in Japan uh, remain uh, that 700, over 700, actually over 800,000. Although going down slightly in the last year, uh, Chinese also declining slowly over time are Koreans. Partly uh, the next, uh, the blue line is Koreans. That's partly because um, so many of the multi generational Koreans are naturalizing uh, and there's fewer Koreans coming from Korea to li live in Japan. The big surprises are Vietnamese, who used to be a really sort of small proportion there. Um, back in well back around the time that I came to Japan and now they are the, they've overtaken Koreans as the second largest group in Japan uh, just judging by the line here that looks like it's 450,000 odd um, Vietnamese uh, the next line below that is Filipinos again steady uh, steadily less than Brazilians Brazilians for a long time were the uh, third largest group um, but um, yeah yeah that um, it's funny as well, look at that, the purple line over here, if you're wondering what that is, that actually used to be the way that they would count combined South Koreans and North Koreans. Um, they stopped counting that, and I guess this has, probably has to do with the number of North Koreans in Japan who have just naturalized in recent years. But yeah, Brazilians have uh, kind of stayed steady, but they've dropped off a little bit from, from the past, and Philippines have certainly increased. So, yeah, that's where they are. In terms of where foreigners live, um, by raw population, I mean, Tokyo is the main place, Nagoya, uh, Aichi is the second one, Osaka is the third, Kanagawa, Yokohama is the fourth, followed by Saitama, Chiba, uh, Kobe, so all the big cities, probably where you would expect. So no real big surprises, perhaps, and where the raw populations are. Um, in terms of actual districts with foreigners, um, again, Kawasaki has the, is the local government, uh, the local city with the with the most foreigners anywhere in Japan, followed by Shinjuku, Edogawa, Adachi. These are all parts of Tokyo. Osaka comes in a little bit below that. Um, I, I believe. How do you read that? Seino. Um, I don't know if you read that as Umeno or Seinoku. Um, yeah, I don't know the local. I, I should have been more careful with that. But um, it's funny, actually, I would have expected to see Gunma or some of the Brazilian towns or something like that show up with higher numbers here. But as you can see, it's overwhelmingly Tokyo. Um, uh, we have that Toyota city uh, comes out number 18 and so on. So, um, yeah, that's where foreigners live. It's a, it's a reminder as well that Western foreigners really are not a significant uh, minority um, among, among the minority of, of foreigners in Japan. And a question is that brazilian with japanese descent or brazilian non-japanese descent does it distinguish between the two it does not um it, it's only counting the ministry of justice statistics for registered foreign residents so for example um if you are close enough to japanese if you have japanese nationality it wouldn't count you at all if you have japanese ancestry or non-japanese ancestry but you're brazilian it doesn't distinguish it just takes brazilian citizens um and if you know brazilian people one thing I really like about Brazil is the fact that, you know how when you're in America, I, I'm, I mean, even, even New Zealand or, you know, well, actually, New Zealand's actually kind of not like this, actually. But when, I go to, when I'm in America or, you know, a lot of other places, it's like you go into a restaurant and you might be in a very multicultural place where you can hear lots of languages and see lots of people. But you will find that Asian people are sitting at Asian tables and white people are sitting at all white tables and black people are sitting at black tables. So for all the social interaction and working and, you know, stuff that happens, there seems to still be this kind of um, de facto social, you know, um, segregation that you still see a lot in Western countries, even, even fairly diverse ones. What I like about Brazil is that, you know, like when I went to Oizumi <coughs> and when I hang out in South America, it's very hard, you know, everybody's got a little bit of everything in Brazil. Everyone's very mixed up there, which is something I really, really like. New Zealand is actually a little bit like that as well, at least, at least with um, Maori and, and, and Caucasian New Zealanders. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. So it's the thing, whenever you hang out with Brazilians, I mean, saying that they've got Brazilian ans you know, Japanese ancestry, those people often bring over their families and, you know, they, they'll look, you'll have a family where at a family table, you'll have both African heritage, Caucasian heritage appearing. And, you know, and, and maybe they married a Japanese, uh, a Nikkei Brazilian, or maybe they actually have like a little, only a little bit and they don't look Japanese. But yeah, it's really common with Japanese. It's something I really like about that.